Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage can be divided into two types, which are the primary and secondary PPH. So primary postpartum hemorrhage is defined as blood loss from the genital tract, which is more than 500 milliliter within the first 24 hours after delivery. If in lower segment caesarea section cases, it is defined as more than 1000 ml of blood loss. Whereas secondary PPH is excessive bleeding from the genital tract after the first 24 hours until 6 weeks after the delivery. The severity of the hemorrhage can be divided into minor, major and massive with the amount of blood loss shown over here. These are some of the risk factors for postpartum hemorrhage. There are antenatal risk factors and also intrapartum risk factors which I further divided them into maternal and fetal risk factors. So you can take a look at these risk factors. These are the causes of primary postpartum hemorrhage, where there are four main causes, tone, trauma, tissue, and thrombin. Tone is the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage, where it consists of 70% out of all the cases. And this tone is due to uterine atony. In cases like overdistension of uterus, for example, multiple pregnancy, polyhydramnios or macrosomic baby, grand multiparity and also presence of uterine fibroids. For trauma, it could be genital tract trauma, including uterine rupture, or any trauma causing injury to the vagina, perineum and uterine tear during caesarean section, episiotomy, or instrumental deliveries. Tissue, it could be due to retained placenta or product of conception, whereas for thrombin, it is rare, only less than 1% of the cases, where it is due to pre-existing or acquired coagulopathy. It can be due to disseminated intravascular coagulation from placenta eruption or severe preeclampsia cases. The clinical features of postpartum hemorrhage are shown over here. So early recognition of blood loss and rapid management is important in postpartum hemorrhage. We have to recognize the maternal signs of cardiovascular compromise. The signs that can be shown are tachycardia, hypotension, paler, and also slow capillary refill. Symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and dizziness. There are also other signs such as peritonism, which could be due to uterine rupture, causing peritonitis. Reduce urine output, tachypnea, and also narrow pulse pressure. So let's move on to the management of postpartum hemorrhage. These are the five main principles in the management. The first one is to recognize and assess the severity of the blood loss. The severity can be classified based on visual estimation of blood loss, clinical signs and symptoms of hypovolemic shock, and also using the obstetric shock index. So this table shows the vital signs and also the estimated amount of blood loss. We should look out for these signs of hypovolemic shock. Whereas for obstetric shock index, it is defined as the heart rate divided by the systolic blood pressure. And it shows the physiological changes in the cardiovascular system during pregnancy. It may be useful in identifying significant blood loss earlier before there is any changes in the systolic blood pressure and hence, identifying it earlier can improve the outcome of the patient. Next, we should communicate and call for help. So we can call team leader or those obstetric registrar or specialists and other medical staff and work as a team. If there is massive blood loss, which is more than 1,500 ml, have to alert cord red. For resuscitation, for minor PPH, we assess the patient's mental status, insert large bowl IV cannula, take bloods for investigation, also, and also give fluids such as crystalloid for resuscitation. Whereas for major PPH, if needed, we have to arrange for blood transfusion. So the treatment will depend on the cause of the postpartum hemorrhage. If it is due to tone, for example, uterine atony, can do uterine massage and also empty the bladder and then give oxytoxics such as IM pitocin and IM syntometrin.
if still bleeding, can give IM carbopros. And if after giving carbopros, it is still bleeding, can consider other methods such as intrauterine balloon tamponade, buckwheat balloon, or surgical intervention can be considered as well. So temporary measures can be done while waiting for the medication to work or while waiting for OT transfer, such as bimineral uterine compression, anti-shock garment, and also aortic compression. This picture shows the steps of the compression of the abdominal aorta. If it is not due to tone, then we have to look out for other causes such as trauma, tissue, and thrombin. For trauma, you can do systemic perineal examination and attempt for immediate repair. If bleeding continues, do vaginal packing while awaiting for transfer to the OT. If it is due to tissue, to check for whether it is due to tissue, we have to check the completeness of the placenta and also the membranes, and also confirm with an ultrasound. If confirmed retained tissue, we can do manual removal of placenta or digital evacuation under analgesia and also cover with antibiotics. If it is in rare cases such as thrombin as a cause, we have to correct the coagulopathy with specific blood products. That's all for this video. Thank you.